Okay, thank you for the introduction. So good evening, yeah, at least it's evening here. Well, and thank you for joining uh, to this academic seminar. My name is Nozomi Mishima at Akita University and I'm teaching in uh, Graduate School of Engineering Science of Akita University. And the title I provided today is, as you can see here, product development from scratch from the beginning, I mean, and significance of value engineering is the subtitle of my talk today. And say, okay, so the chat is not for me, <laughs> I see. And this is the self interaction. So as you can see here, well, uh, my background, uh, educational background is mechanical engineering. And from the first, say, some 20 years, I have been working in uh, National Research Institute. Um, it has changed to uh, so called. In I guess we'll get off trouble. Yeah. Um, you did the wrong one. Um, okay. So let's reset it. And what did I talk? So uh, from about 10 years ago, I moved to um, Akita University and uh, called Mo Cooperative Major in Life Cycle Design Engineering. And it changed its name from this April, uh, Cooperative Major in Sustainable Engineering. Uh, the focus of the major is almost same, environmental benign technology, environmental benign de design or renewable energy and so forth. And research topics by now is, you have various things. So I don't have time to explain one by one. Anyway, let's go into my talk today. And well, what I'm going to talk today is about value engineering. I don't know whether you have uh, familiar, you are familiar with the, uh, the term value engineering, but it's, it is in the very beginning of the product development in order to define the product so-called product definition. And in product definition, the important question is that are we addressing the right question to design the product or design some service? And it is also a process to identify what is the killer value of the product, uh, looking at the customer value chain or uh, focusing on the value voice of the customers, so-called VOC. And some uh, tools such as value graph or affinity diagram, such kind of design tool is provided, has been provided for uh, product definition stage. And it's also uh, value engineering is to identify how to deliver the values to customers and structure of the product or process to uh, design and produce the product. And it's also uh, value engineering is to determine the balance between what should be designed, what should be manufactured, produced, and how to produce it. Uh, what quality should be provided and, uh, and how to uh, input such quality into the product. Okay, so this is also a view graph to showing the significance of product definition. Product definition is again in the very beginning of the product development stage. And in recent production, um, we have to manage all the product life cycle, uh, starting from the preparation of raw materials to uh, through the um, end of life treatments such as reuse, recycle, or disposal, and so on. And uh, during the stages from starting from the raw material preparation to uh, so-called free all, um, manufacturing stage, assembly stage, service stage, maintenance stage, 
all those stages should be overviewed from the very beginning of the product uh, development. So um, the role of early design stage is very important nowadays. We have to view all the uh, life cycle from the beginning and then, well, manage it properly. And that's also uh, and I, one of the explanations of the significance of product definition as well. And another figure here is also showing why we have to uh, care, uh, uh, focus on the product definition carefully. Because uh, profit determined uh, throughout the production should be, is uh, likely to be decided, determined in the very beginning of the product development stage. And on the other hand, a cost committed is, is will increase throughout the production stage and funds expended will be, uh, will increase in the later stage of product development. So the early stage of product development, so-called planning stage, concept design stage is very important. So that's why I, I'm saying that product definition is a very important and significant process. Okay, so profit potential determined during project planning. So that's the, the simple words to explain the importance of strong, strong product definition. Okay, um, excuse me, so mute your microphone during my talk. Anyway. So this is a uh, is showing a view graph showing that the uh, tool provided for product definition stage, and from the very uh, beginning of the product development, for for example, the design tool called value graph, project priority matrix, or quality function deployment, uh, function tree, structure tree, uh, such design tool have been provided. And in the later stage of product definition, so-called quality by design stage, uh, other, some other design tools have been provided. And today I will introduce, not shown here, well, some of the uh, design tools um, useful for early stage of product development. Okay, so another view graph here is showing why um, product definition is important. These, this is showing that the basic steps of product development uh, definition, starting from strategic alignment of processes, design processes, and well, checking the compliances or uh, extracting or, or gathering user needs or competitive analysis uh, with other products, competitive products, other products from the competitor or another uh, method to provide the same quality, same function or localization issue and so forth and product positioning. So, and the steps of product definition proceed to the, the later stage, such as uh, prioritize the project or say checking the R&D risk or checking the core competence, competencies of the product or your organization as well, and so on. So uh, the product definition itself is consisted of uh, rather, many steps and complicated processes. And that's why if something happens in the very beginning of the, day, of the say process, all other uh, following process will collapse. So that's why you have to be very careful 
in understanding the customer values in the very early stage of the product development and uh, define the product well. Okay. These are the, well, major reasons that I'm saying that product definition stage is important. And this is, this biograph is showing that the practical example regarding the, um, say, well, a little bit old example regarding the one megabit DRAM, dynamic RAM. And this is about the Toshiba's case. And say, this curve here is showing the total sales of the, of the market, one megabit DRAM. And uh, the product first to market take, took major portion of the total sales. And the rest here, late to market, the product late to market can take only a small portion of the total sales. So first to market wins, say, big money. So time raised to money. Uh, development time or process time, delivery time, uh, design time, uh, supply chain, management time or whatever. So it is necessary to be careful in product definition, but uh, it's also the time is limited for product definition. So careful and rapid development is necessary. And well, sometimes or frequently, well, unfortunately, product definition will fail. If, for example, one major reason of product definition failure is excessive time spent in definition phase, as I explained, uh, too late or not prompt to, to design a good product. Uh, because of poor management direction or incomplete uh, customer or user information or incapable of making decisions, well, because of too many um, data, too many informations and not able to make the right decision or no consensus among the team. So team members uh, says, individually says something I think so. I think that, uh, well, I, I don't think so or something like that and no consensus among the team. And also the poor definition can be the reason for product definition failure. And sometimes it, it is necessary to correct uh, so many things during the implementation phase or, well, there was no correction, but market was very honest because of the bad data, invalid interpretation or poor product definition. So um, product definition often failure fails. That's why the private companies all over the world is say making the effort or struggling every time, day by day. Okay. So uh, today's main topic is, is, is to show you, uh, introduce you some tools for product definition. And I have provided three design tools uh, shown here. The first one is scenario graph, and it is a method to identify the target of product development by listing up all the op options for four Ws. Uh, four Ws mean who or what, when and where, and then consider possible combinations of different options of 4W. That's a scenario graph. And the second one here is customer value chain analysis. And it is a method to list up all the stakeholders of the specific product and related business and clarify who is your direct customer and who is your indirect customer and who 
has uh, the side effect, who takes the side effect of your say business and so on. And the last one, I hope I can reach to the last. Uh, the last one I am going to introduce today is morphological analysis, uh, which is a method to list up and screen ideas systematically and create new ideas. Okay. That's a list of topics I have provided. The first one here is again, scenario graph. And it is combined four W's and think of some scenarios, uh, suitable scenarios for, for developing the product. And points to be considered in the scenario graph is shown here. What are the combination in the existing products especially the successful product, uh, product in, the, in the market, uh, what combinations um, are used, and which variable has a large impact among uh, different Ws. And are there any new keywords to, to uh, add new scenarios? Or what will happen if some adjective are added? These are the points to be considered in the scenario graph. But I think without a uh, practical example, it's kind of difficult to explain. So I will show you in the following slides. Okay, again, as for the scenario graph explanation, scenario graph is to provide different options for Four W, uh, four Ws are what, where, when, and who. And by providing the exhaustive list of scenario, and in in this case, a location is is replaced by, uh, is replacing where, and circumstance or time for when, and state of the users, or for who, and activity. Uh, for what? So a, a little bit translation of uh, where to location and activity instead of what and users mental or physical state instead of who. Okay, by replacing uh, some of the W's by these more practical items, this is an example of scenario graph um, consideration for mobile X-ray machine. Well, since this is a kind of an old example, so currently uh, this scenario provided here is not, not really say updated and not really innovative, but uh, please understand this is just an example for explaining the scenario graph method. Okay, so. The target is mobile X-ray machine and the activity, well, replacing what uh, is shown here under for diagonals or, or in order to holding tools or well, carry it to somewhere or make some communication using the, the machine and or send the image to so remote places and where uh, x-ray room, surgery room, uh, ER field in the ambulance, veterinarian or stadium. So these are the options for where and those activities, different activities or different wares can be sometimes combined or sometimes not, not able to enable, to combine. So there's some options of combinations of these activities and wares as well. Okay, so surgery room or x-ray room or in the, to carry and in the field, this is about the battlefield or in the ambulance. 
or stadium as well. Okay, so many options of activities or what, what you're doing and where is the location. Mm -hmm. And the next step is to uh, consider different options for when, such as when it is dark or when it is hot uh, under the war or after just after the accident or first day at job or in the cold weather and so on. And also uh, different options for user states uh, such as in panic or mode or very nervous or tired under some stress or afraid of something or feeling pain or in hurry, whatever. So all these combinations can be at different options, different scenarios. All different combinations can be at different scenarios uh, provided by throughout the scenario graph consideration. And uh, the next steps to do is to consider all those options and well, say, select suitable options or select um, feasible or hopeful options to provide a new mobile x-ray machine into the market. And say one, well, there, there should be many different options, different scenarios. So one methods, yeah, there were several methods uh, have been provided to select suitable scenarios uh, from the lots of scenarios. But one uh, method, simple method here is scenario selection by benchmarking. Well, okay, using in a mobile exterior machine used in the field or used in the veterinarian or ambulance or stadium. So these are the four different scenarios. And regarding these, say, uh, five points, the different scenario has been scored. Different scenarios have been scored and for comparing with the, yeah, for example, for the rival products in the market and for your company to, to design and provide the new mobile X-ray, for example, competence, uh, you have a competence in the field and strong needs of your say core users from your core users uh, for the field use or market size of the field use is, well, larger than compared to other markets or and so on. Yeah. But for example, for the in for the use in the ambulance, well, competence is okay, but uh, compare with the uh, competitive products in the in the market or other methods in the market, uh, disadvantage is here. So in total, in this case, uh, based on the benchmarking. You have to focus on the mobile X-ray machine uh, in use to be used in the field. Is your say result of your scenario selection in this example? So basically, this is the scenario graph method which I'm uh, why I have provided for today. Well, I think it's a kind of a difficult to catch all. Uh, throughout this rapid talk, but just feel to the importance of significance of product definition stage and, and have some image regarding the design tools provided for the product definition stage. Okay, so the second one here is uh, one of the very major tools in value engineering, which is called customer value chain analysis. CVCA stands for customer value chain analysis. And 
they, I have, well, explained uh, the significance of product definition stage. And I also explained that the customer is the key and key tools in product definition stage, key design tools in product definition stages. Yeah, for example, uh, I have explained about the scenario graph. Now I'm going to explain about customer value chain analysis and also uh, morphological analysis in the later on this talk. But uh, there are many other design tools such as project priority matrix or quality function deployment. And these are all well-known tools in um, early stage of design. Okay, so anyway, customer value chain analysis. Um, this is a typical customer value chain diagram, which is used in the customer value chain analysis. And this is show the CVC customer value chain diagram example for a cargo system of SUV in United States market. And yeah, this, this company here, UT Automotive Motive is a company providing and, and designing and producing this cargo area organizer. And they, uh, this company is providing this cargo area organizer to some different routes for some different routes. Uh, one is for uh, General Motors assembly plant factory. And the other route here is to service parts organization and through this service parts organization, uh, it goes to car dealers and then end users as well. And also from the GM assembly plant, uh, when it is uh, pre installed in the automobile uh, in the factory, it also goes to dealers and then provided for end users here. Or it's also possible to uh, provide to other OEMs and then well, from the say so-called car parts shop, it can be provided for end users directly. So many different routes of of product uh, providing products. So it means that you have to uh, watch carefully regarding this uh, structure of your business or structure of this product and. Uh, identify who is your customer, direct customer, and who is your indirect customers. For example, if you focus on the, well, assembly plant, if you have a, if you find some priority regarding the assembly plant, you have to uh, design your product easy to assemble in the, in the factory or something like that or if you uh, find the priority in the other OEMs or, or car parts shop, you have to design the cargo area organizer, which is convenient to be sold in the uh, so-called so auto shops and so forth. So who is your customers will, uh, will give you the different solution regarding your design regarding your product definition. Okay, so let's have some CVC exercise regarding the vending machine. I don't know whether you know that or not, but Japan is a vending machine kingdom. So you can see the vending machine for beverage all over the town. I think I, in for example, in the university campus, you can, find at least 20, 30 vending machines and all over the city. And I think the reason why that vending machine is so popular in Japan is that vending machine business is profitable, maybe. And some companies producing vending machines and some company providing beverages as well. So please imagine that you're a design engineer in a vending machine producing company. 
So you're not producing beverages, you're producing vending machine. Okay, please imagine that. And the first question I, uh, I'm going to ask you now is what are the points to design a good vending machine? Well, in the practical lecture, I mean, for a regular lecture, I, I give the audience, I mean, give the students for some time to provide the answer. But since uh, there's a time limitation today, so I will, I don't ask you directly now. But for example, well, usually uh, students answer that, hey, okay, easy to buy or beverage bottle looks attractive or something like that. So because, yeah, as I mentioned, Japan is a vending machine kingdom. So all the students have an experience to buy beverage in a vending machine. So they have a, say, consumer viewpoint, beverage consumer viewpoint. So they provided some answers, uh, easy to buy or something like that, barrier free or whatever. And of course, those answers are good, not wrong. But I recommend them to say, provide a customer value chain diagram. Okay, I said that you're working in the vending machine manufacturer. So it means that your direct customer is not the soda consumer. Your direct customer is vending machine operator. That is the structure of the vending machine business. Vending machine operator company well owns vending machines and provide uh, beverage through the vending machine. So if you're working in this company, you have to focus on First, you have to focus on the vending machine operator to be convenient in operating the vending machine. For example, easy to say refill or easy to collect money or uh, security of the, the money uh, installed in the vending machine and so on. And through the direct customer, you will be connected to the indirect customer. So of course those answers are not wrong, uh, but you also, or first you have to focus on your direct customer. That's what I'm, I usually explain in my regular class by using this customer value chain diagram. And after um, taking a look at the, uh, the basic structure of the customer value chain, yeah, many different questions, many additional questions uh, can be provided. For example, after taking a look at the customer value chain diagram, what are the points to design a good vending machine? The same question again. And after taking a look at the CBC diagram, uh, the answers can be different. Well, easy to operate, easy to refill uh, money, security of the money and so forth. That will be the, that can be the answer after taking a look at the CVC diagram. And then uh, additional analysis regarding the diagram is for example, what are the, say exclamation, exclamation marks in the diagram. This is usually these marks, well, this is money and this is product vending machine and the beverage. And this exclamation marks usually uh, suggest, shows that the information exchange, information flow. And so what, what is the information from bottler to yeah, for example, bottler to vending machine manufacturer, or what is the information from soda consumer to bottler? For example, there there might some there might be some complaints regarding the beverage quality. Well, there was some bad bugs in a drink beverage or something like that. Can be uh, information provided from soda consumer to bottler. 
or uh, the information provided from bottler to vending machine manufacturer, for example, some requirements regarding the suitable, say, temperature to provide the beverage or something like that, or another information from soda consumer to the store uh, where the vending machine is settled. Okay, this is a kind of a difficult one. Uh, probably this is the purchase opportunity or something like that uh, will is provided from soda consumer to store. So it's also useful to think and focus on your, well, product design to consider the information exchange uh, from different stakeholders in this, in this business structure. Okay, so who is the key stakeholder in the vending machine business? Well, if I'm asked to, well, answer only one stakeholder, I will answer the vending machine operator is a key player of this vending machine business, right? He's in the center of the hub. He, she, it, I don't know. Uh, so that's uh, the basic explanation of say customer value chain analysis and, and also showing the power of customer value chain analysis in determine your target consumer and providing the good design solution for your consumer throughout the product definition stage. Okay. So maybe I, I talk too first, but uh, since I made a little early, I can reach to the last topic here. And this is also an interesting method to say, provide, to create new ideas in your product design. It is called morphological analysis and sometimes abbreviated as MOLF analysis or MOLF. And in the typical morphological analysis, the steps are shown here. The first one is to, first step is to break down uh, the goal into some essential sub elements by using function block diagram or other say um, categorizing method such as um, dividing uh, the goal into sub elements by using the different voice of customers or different scenarios or different four Ws and so on. But the very typical one is to um, break down uh, the main uh, goal, main function of the product into sub elements by using function block diagram. So that's what I'm going to explain today. And the second step is to systematically broaden possible solutions by ask how else and uh, draw a morphological chart. And then combine different solution elements such as uh, I, sh well, like I have explained in, in the um, scenario graph, in, in order to generate feasible alternatives of the current ongoing product and watch for compatibility. Okay, let me explain. Uh, the functional diagram here, a morphological analysis here. And the example here is bathroom scale. I hope that you have familiar with the bathroom scale. It's just a scale to step on it and then measure your weight. Yes, yeah, since that, <laughs> um, this example is from, well, this photo is from the United States example. So it's written in pounds, so not kilograms. Okay, anyway, 
the major function of the bathroom scale is of course to measure weight. So by only by focusing on the major big function, it's rather difficult to provide the possible alternatives. So in this method, uh, it is uh, divided into uh, the major uh, function is divided into the sub functions. One function of the bathroom scale is uh, one sub function of bathroom scale is to support subject. Well, people or something object uh, right or put on this plate here. So uh, this bathroom scale has a function to support object, right? And also it is to convert, convert mass, which is a one physical a feature of object to some kind of signal. And then also a uh, sub function here is to indicate signal and other sub function here is to hold parts together because this is a one bathroom scale product. So it should be uh, tied into uh, one single say piece product. So these are the four sub elements, sub functions of bathroom scale. And then, okay, in a current conventional design, so in order to support subject, some kind of a plastic or metal, I don't know, a plate is used for this sub to satisfy the cell sub function. And in order to convert mass to signal spring is used in the conventional solution. And in order to indicate signal, analog dial uh, is here, is here, okay. And whole, in order to hold parts together, probably screws are used for that purpose. But uh, what do you have to do next in the morphological analysis is to provide a different solution for replace current methods. Okay. Um, yeah, again, in the regular class, I will, I usually ask students to provide the alternatives, but since I have no time today, I have provided some here. Uh, in order to support subject, box can be used as well, or I'll say bubble, say wrap or something can be also used for support subject. And in order to convert mass to signal, strain gauge, or maybe possible to count. Well, I'm not talking about the feasibility. I'm just talking about the possible options to replace sub functions and count molecules, or if you provide the enough number of cornflakes in the plane by measuring the sounds of the conflict breakage, you might be able to know uh, the mass. Or in order to indicate signal, dial or dig digits, digital displays or sounds. Yeah, for example, the, um, the interval of the sound beep can be the signal to show the weight or a voice. And in order to hold parts together, screws is the current method, but they are, it might be possible to replace screws by glue and so on. And the next step is to combine a different um, options to replace, to satisfy these sub functions such as bo box and cornflakes, voice, glue, or bubble, string gauge, sound, screws, and so on. So this is the essence of, well, morphological analysis. Okay. And by, by providing different solutions to replace sub functions and combine different solutions, different 
uh, solutions for sub functions into one, um, say, product and think out whether it is feasible or commercially available or profitable or and so on. So that is that is the morphological analysis. Uh, what I have provided today. Okay. So sorry about the say too quick talk, but since uh, the time I have given is about forty five minutes, I have XD exceeded. Uh, but let me summarize uh, product definition. Okay, so the clear product definition is the first step step in your project, I mean, product development project, and it is critical to the success of project planning, product development. And there are some key tools in product definition, such as a scenario graph, customer value chain analysis, or morphological analysis. These three I have explained today, tonight. And other, another important tool, uh, sorry, I have no time to explain it today, but for example, quality function deployment uh, abbreviated as QFD is a well-known, very famous tool in product definition in early stage of product de de development. And uh, after defining a good product, Um, it's uh, the next step is to provide the uh, extend the the process to the later stage of later stage of early stage of design, uh, so called quality by design, by using quality control methods or robust design uh, technology or so called. Uh, the failure analysis method, so-called failure modes and effect analysis, or fault tree analysis and so forth. So again, product definition is a kind of a very important step in product development process. That's what I'm going to put emphasis for today's talk. And thank you for your attention. And I hope this lecture sounded somewhat interesting to you. Okay. And I think that the time has run out and I'm open for some question or comments or whatever. Thank you for your attention. Thank you very much, Sensei. That was a very interesting presentation. So, does anyone have any question or comments regarding today's lecture? Please don't hesitate to ask Sensei for any further information. Also, you can write your question down in the chat box and we can answer the question during this session. Mm. So, I got a request that could we have a copy of the presentation, please? Yeah, it's possible, but I don't know how to provide it. How can I? Can I provide it? Hmm. Uh, if it's okay with Sensei, we uh, we are planning to, or we would like to uh, post or upload today's session on the Gemena SNS platforms. Is it okay, mm -hmm. Sensei? Yes, it's okay. So thank you very much. So those who are interested, they can watch again today's lecture and learn more about the topic. So. Does anyone have a question? Mm, I, may I, mm -hmm. I got a request. Will you give certificate? Certificate of what? Mm. Sorry, I don't understand that. Yeah. Certificate of what? I think certificate of uh, attending maybe the Gemena program. If so, currently we, we, we cannot give certificates, but we are planning to um, plan for these um how say giving certificates for participants so we highly appreciate your cooperation our friends and we will the Gemina project is thinking about this so okay we we received another question 
Do you have any tips or recommendations on how to approach a design problem in general? <laughs> design problem in general. Yes, the problems in design uh, well process will vary. Hey, uh, varies uh, into the broad area. So it's kind of a difficult question. But uh, as I mentioned in, in my well um, presentation, customer is the key. So uh, the very most important point is how to uh, collect the voice of customers well. Yeah, by by some means. So in general, uh, the good observation regarding of the customers can solve the problem. So <laughs> for the general question, I, I have I I can only say some general comments. So thank you so much, Sensei. We have another question also. Like uh, now, technology is changing so quick or so quickly. Mm -hmm. Digital era. So, can we use the same method, same methodology for um, for the same purpose? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, uh, I mean, the technology development is is uh, well, as you said, uh, very quick. So, uh, the individual items, for example, in uh, dividing the major main function to sub function elements, the individual function might be different. For example, in the conventional one, uh, it's using dial, but recently, well, digital numbers is, is more popular. So the individual items might, might be different, but uh, the basic method is can be common mm -hmm. for modern technology as well. Thank you, Sensei. Also, another question, especially for the scientists. You know, Sensei, that scientists really think about customers need so and especially this methodology it's very useful very interested so how do scientists can improve their way of thinking to uh, uh -huh. <laughs> well it's also a very interesting but difficult question um well usually they, these tools are provided for uh, say design of products or design of service. So it's a kind of an engineering tools. So for scientists, pure scientists, um, I cannot, I don't, I'm not very sure that this is a good answer, but uh, for example, the method of CVCA, method called CVCA can be useful for scientists by, well, by, for example, providing the stakeholders, for example, earth environment or some um, natural phenomena as uh, one of the stakeholders, and then provide uh, what is your research, scientific research is for or something like that, so. Yeah. Thank you, Sensei, thank you. We also received question. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, so, sir, might might the customer still not understand yet with their needed? So, how if it do by our confidence? How to make simple parameter for maybe the customer needs? What's the success factor? Okay, um, good question. If I if I can provide a perfect answer for this question, I well, I think I'd better not to be a university professor rather than he uh, should be a, say, well, company. I should open a company, I think. But anyway, um, say without, yeah, without the customer uh, themselves, uh, they're not understanding their needs, um, say, perfectly. It's, it's, uh, there are some methods to, observes customers uh, the true wants uh, by say lab uh, monitoring or interviews or, or field observation. Well, such kind of method is also provided in, in say market 
business engineering, so-called business engineering. So in order to, without the uh, clear opinion from the customer themselves, it might, it, there are some methods to, um, well, extract the hidden needs from customers. So. Very much, Sensei. Thank you very much for uh, the explanation, Sensei, and thanks to everyone for the questions and their interaction. We still have four minutes for today's lesson. If someone else is having comments, don't hesitate to uh, ask, to interact. We received a comment from another participant asking, saying the seminar was inspiring. Thank you, Sensei. And is it possible to organize a more detailed seminar which delves into the E to follow up from this point on? So <laughs> from the Jimena side, we are continuously planning for future academic seminars. And we highly appreciate Ishima Sensei's cooperation for further uh, lectures. So just keep updated by the Jimena program uh, plans and we look forward to it. <laughs> okay. Uh, what is the symptom of or stage when our design starts to fail? Hmm. That's also a difficult question. Yeah, there are many case, various cases. Uh, but the failure of the design stage will be become clear in the later stage. That is the problem. Uh, usually you cannot recognize this design is failure or not in the very early stage. After, yeah, for example, uh, several years or so, uh, you usually you notice, well, this was the failure. Mm -hmm. So that's why I'm saying that the beginning stage, um, product definition stage is very important. You have to, it's a kind of a, well, I know it's a difficult task, but you have to overview uh, all the life cycle of the product and then yeah, consider well. So, um, yeah. Yes, that's exactly. So I think we are getting close to the end of this session. Highly appreciation again, Sensei, for your cooperation, and we look forward to further academic seminars. Arigatou gozaimasu. <laughs>